What's up, everybody, and welcome back to the Saint Grimmy FM channel. Today, we are starting our first official non-beta day one save of Football Manager 2023. And if you couldn't tell from the announcements I've made earlier on previous episodes, and you can't tell by the colour of my shirt, well, I'm about to tell you who we are managing. Drum roll, please, ladies and gentlemen, because we will be managing... The one, the only, Blive Spartans. Yes, we've got the shirt prepped. We're ready to go. It's been in the wash. I don't smell too bad, I think. Maybe not. Um, and yes, we've got Blive Spartans ready to go. As you can see, they have hired us against their lack of better judgment. Um, and they've confirmed that we're ready to go. Um, we lack the reputation of a survival specialist. That doesn't really matter because we're going to take Blythe's, we're going to take Blythe some interesting places, I think, um, and it's going to be an interesting journey. So if you are with me on this and you want to see more of this, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and we're going to get into it. Take a look at a squad, have a look at the fixtures coming up, and see if there's any wiggle room in terms of the budget to bring anyone in if we can. So let's get into it. So as you can see, there's not much expectation on our shoulders at the moment. We have a media prediction of 21st in the table. So make of that what you will. There is four relegation places in comparison to last year where there was just the one. So for teams like Blythe, they'll be looking over the shoulders and trying to make sure we get out of that, get out of that position essentially to survival or mid-table obscurity and just try and see through the first year and get through as without with as little damage as possible to the club and to the players and see if we can build a budget for the next season. Um, that's my realistic expectation. I'm looking for survival, um, and if we can get up the table, even better. But we do have some quality players, um, and we do have a bit of a transfer budget. As you can see, we've got 2500 in in the kitty. Not that I think we'll spend that. And we do have a wage budget of £6,853 per week. So yeah, and as you can see, it's going to be a challenge, but I'm looking forward to it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm really looking forward to it. So here we are then. This is the starting 11, or who Tony Platten, our chairman, is expecting us to get into the starting 11. Um, having watched these lads on a regular basis for the home games, I know who I'm going to be having in my team and who I'm not going to be having in my team. And to be honest, this is pretty much the 11 we see in week in, week out, with one or two names probably in rotation. Um, so yeah, I'm... Looking forward to see what I can get out of the boys to see if I can do any better than what Blythe are doing this year. Um, to be honest, in real life, Blythe have been pretty unlucky with some of the refereeing. Um, we probably should have another like six, seven points on the board and we should be out of the relegation zone. But what I want to try and avoid is re is us relying essentially on the referees to get us out of this position. So hopefully we've got the ability in the squad and the players already in the squad to help us do that. And I think we do. I think we do. We've got some good characters in there. So let's see what we can do with that. So in terms of our expectation for the season, this is what Blythe um, and Tony Platten um, as a club and as a chairman are looking for us to do. They want us to stay within the wage budget, grow the club's reputation as they proclaim and are rightfully known as the most famous non-league club. Um, Blythe Spartans have some history to them obviously many a famous fa cup run but we want to take them higher than that we want to try and get them into divisions they've never been before and that's that's what we want to do long term but for this season we want to attempt to avoid relegation from the vanarama north we want to be competitive in the fa cup and be competitive in the fa trophy um and then our contract expires at the end of the season so if we don't have a good season we will be out and be looking for another job at some somewhere else and yeah to be honest <laughs> the future doesn't look too bright for by spartans or there isn't much in terms of ambition from the chairman shall we say we're looking to avoid relegation for the next five years that ain't what i'm looking for i want to try and kick the club up another gear and see some ambition in amongst the players the staff and give some hope to the fans that maybe bigger and better things are coming to by spartans in the near future so in terms of the supporters, this is what the supporters are looking for. They want us to play a high-tempo pressing game, avoid, attempt to avoid relegation, much like the board are looking for us to do, 
want us to be again competitive against Gateshead if we should ever play against them because Gateshead have been promoted, so they're now in the National League. And they want us to be competitive against Donaldson and Spennymore, who are both in our league at the moment. So that those those are pretty basic expectations from the supporters, but it's something I think we can do, um, and we'll give it our best shot, certainly in the rivalries and in the uh, derby games that we're going to have over the course of the season. So in terms of the formation and the tactics that we're going to have with Blythe, we are going to be using a 4-3-3 DM wide formation, um, pretty similar to what they use um, in the games that I've seen them play recently. Um, this was pretty much a similar formation to what I saw them against the weekend against AFC Telford, where fortunately enough, I was there to witness a, a 3-0 win, um, which was a much needed three points for us, to be fair. Um, so yeah, this is what I'm going to be looking to do. We're going to be looking to keep the ball tempo pretty high, look to counter where we can and counter press if we lose the ball. The defensive line is going to be kept quite far back because I don't want us being caught out with balls over the top. And we'll have a high press as well um, and try and keep the opposition on their toes, basically. So, yeah, that's what we're going to look to do. Um, and, yeah, that's that's the tactic going forward. Obviously, we'll see how it goes in the first few games of the league because uh, that will obviously dictate what we do in terms of results. Um, but, yeah, really looking forward to it. And, obviously, we've got the preseason to go through and see how the players perform. But, yeah, really looking forward to see how we're going to do. So if you haven't been playing much of Football Manager, one of the uh, features that's in, included in the game now is basically a supporter's profile. So it'll, it'll show you basically what the makeup of your supporter profile is. So as you can see, we've got a big a big 40%, almost 40% chunk of uh, is our core supporters. We've got the hardcore fans at 16%, um, fair weather fans at 12%, casual fans at 13%, and family at 20%. Um, social media followers, we've got about 929 and we've got season ticket holders just under 200 at 175. So it'll be interesting to see as season continues and hopefully as we develop as a club, how that'll grow. Um, so keep that in mind, obviously, when we check back in on this over the course of seasons um, and we'll see we'll see how we do. So as you can see here, here's our pre-season. Um, we're going with a normal pre-season schedule. Uh, again, First 11 versus second 11 is our first game. And then we've got some local teams to play, uh, likes of North Shields. Um, and then we're playing some slightly bigger names, um, Oldham, who are in the division above us now. Um, and yeah, we've got a full schedule coming up before we get to the start of the season. So in terms of staff, we need to make a couple of additions, I think. Um, as you can see, our general average rating in comparison to the Vanarama National League North isn't that great. Um, we're well below average in terms of defending. Attack, we're 17, so we're slightly better. Fitness is 22nd. So yeah, as you can see, all pretty pretty low um, in terms of that. Our goalkeeping, however, is pretty damn good. So what we want to try and do is bring in some coaching, um, just a general coach at this point, to try and get us up the table um, in terms of our average coaching comparison. Because I think if we get some decent coaches in, will do relatively well, I think. Um, and what we also need to do is bring some scouts in because a key component to any successful football team is the scouting department and bring it, being able to find players who fit in your system. So at the minute, we basically have no one. So we are practically nowhere in terms of our scouting system. So we need to build that from the ground up. So yeah, we've got the adverts out there now and we'll see who comes in over the coming weeks because it does take a few weeks for them to come in in terms of applications. So it's already started well already with the team. I've told the team that I want us to avoid relegation this year. And Nicky Devidix, one of the leaders of uh, a highly influential player of the team, doesn't think we stand a chance. And basically is telling us. Um, apparently, we've, and now I've offended a bunch of people. So that, that bodes well. Hopefully I haven't annoyed the players too much with that. <laughs> Some of the players have come out quite positive. Louis McNall, he's going to be very important for us like he is in the season. Finishing a 13 at this level is nothing to be scoffed at. Nathan Buddle, club captain, main central defender. JJ is a bit more positive as well. JJ is the talisman of the of the team now, um, now that Robbie Dale's not there. So yeah, big players are looking a bit more positive, which is really good for us. So we've had a first friendly match against, against our second 11, um, and we've won 4-2. Um, and yeah, pretty... Pretty happy with it. Um, most of the recognised names that I would I would expect to see on the, the score sheet are there. 
and the youngster that scored recently for us as well, Rio Joyce, is in there. And look at the potential. He's an exciting young prospect and someone I'm going to certainly look to to fill in some of the gaps over the season and play in some of the cup competitions as well and see if we can develop him as much as we would like to. Um, if we get that full potential ability, I think we'll be on to win over Rio. And some pretty bad news for us going into the start of a preseason. Lewis McNall cannot keep himself off the injury bench. Um, unfortunately, he's torn a groin muscle and he's going to be out for five weeks after sprinting. So, yeah, not great. Not a great start to, to life at Bly Spartans when your main striker goes out injured. So a couple of bit of business I've got out of the way early was that Matty Elsden and Josh Scott were both in out of contract essentially and we're on a rolling month to month contract I've got Elston in knowing how important a player he is and how great he's played for Blythe over the course of the real season so far I've managed to get him in into a into a contract and he's agreed to sign that up and we've also got Josh Scott who's pretty much going to be playing the role of our backup striker though I get the feeling he's probably going to play quite a few games this year with McNall's injury history Um, so yeah we're going to We've got them both signed up on the contract. We couldn't get Matty Alexander to agree to a contract, though. He wanted over £200. I wasn't willing to give him that, um, especially considering how good Alex Mitchell is for us. Um, so, yeah, like considering he gets paid £300, I think he's probably double the keeper that Matty Alexander is. So, yeah, we'll have to see how that plays out. We'll have to look for a backup goalkeeper. But yeah, we've got some we've got some quality in there. In terms of the budget, we've got about four hundred pounds. Though I'm not sure how much we're gonna have of that left, um, because we've obviously signed Elsden and and Scott on contracts. So we'll have to see how that plays out. And as you'll know from probably a lot of you being big fans of um, non-league football, a lot of the contracts are rotating year to year. Um, so it's no surprise that when we see the players contracts expecting to expire that we've got so many well pretty much everybody on the books ready to go um but some of them do have extension clauses which i will probably activate quite a few of them um so we'll have to wait and see but yeah i think we'll see how the first sort of 10 15 games go and we'll be able to make a better decision in terms of who we want to keep um, and who's gonna help us get up the league and hopefully get us promoted in the next couple of seasons so yeah Something to watch out for with that. So the first bit of major movement in terms of Blythe is I've removed Andrew Innes as my assistant manager. Um, nothing personal to Andrew, just wanted to get my own assistant manager in and see if we can bring in someone with a bit more quality in terms of the attacking and defending coaching side of things. Um, so we'll have to wait and see because, uh, again, it's kind of a lottery down here. You don't know who's going to apply at this point in the football manager <laughs> cycle in, in the non-league so we'll have to wait and see but hopefully we can bring someone better in um, and I'll be taking over from the friendlies from now on. So as we can see we've got our first signing in of the backroom staff we've got Matt Waldron in again I think in terms of this level and in terms of what we're looking for he's got good stats in terms of attacking and defending and he'll be able to lead the training for me pretty effectively I think um, until my assistant manager comes in. Um, speaking of which We've got an average response to the assistant manager. Um, so we'll have a look in terms of these and see who's going to take over. So the guy that we're going to go for is Matthew Rose. He was previously assistant manager at Barnsley, but he's currently not had any roles in the football pyramid for quite a while. As we can see, he was attacking and defending in his mental, tactical, technical side. He is a little bit better than what we've had previously with Andrew Innes. So we're going to try and get him in and offer him a contract. And frankly, he's accepted that straight away so that'll be a big coup for us as well we're now waiting on scouts to come in as well so we can start getting to look at some players and see what we can bring in see if we can bring any loans in to help pad out the team a little bit we've made approaches to two scouts there one being Alex Canavan and Lucas Deadfield Vokins if we can get a couple of scouts in that'll help help us greatly to balance out the books and and to try and get a, a double the amount of players looked at and especially this early part of the season where we're going to be looking to try and get a couple of players in just to fill out the squad a little bit um in terms of where i'm looking in terms of the squad it's kind of it's kind of hard to see but i think probably midfield is a key area and potentially in goal i think that's those are the two areas i'm looking for because 
if we look at the squad, we don't have a lot of defensive midfielders. We've got plenty of midfield, like central midfield options, um, but we don't have many defensive midfield options. And then I think someone, because if Matt Alexander goes and leaves any contract in the middle of the season, we need another goalkeeper to come in. I'd like another striker, but we do have Josh Scott and Jay Errington, if needs be, until McNall gets back. And hopefully McNall comes back and stays injury free, but we'll have to wait and see. So I can confirm Blythe Spartans under my stewardship has made its very first signing that by the name of Jamie Potts. As you can see, Jamie Potts doesn't have too much in terms of uh, ability right now, but if we look at what he could be, he could be just as good as JJ um, in the near future. So I think with his first touch, his passing looks all right as well for this level. He's got some decent mental stats as well, and physically he is relatively sound need to work on that stamina a little bit but i think in terms of the potential he's someone we can certainly bring in and we've got him on a fairly cheap contract as well which always helps out so yeah first thing we've made now is jamie potts and in another bit of good news we've got lewis mcnall back and he's going to be playing the first game of his return from injury against workington so Hopefully we can get him some goals and get him a bit of fitness under his belt because um, we're getting close to the start of the season now. So yeah, hopefully we hopefully we can keep him injury free, fingers crossed. And with Lewis McNall's first game returned in the friendly, he scored two goals and got a 9.8 match rating. So thankfully, five weeks out hasn't done him too much damage. Um, and we've got some goals as well, for a couple of goals for Corey McEwen and a goal for Jordan Hickey as well towards the end. So yeah, a nice 5-0 win. Um, can't say fairer than that, really, can we? So here we are then, ladies and gentlemen. We are starting our league campaign today with Bly Spartans at home to Kidderminster, one of the favourites for the league. So it's going to be a tough go. It's going to be a tough game. Everyone's fit and healthy. But Noel's not quite ready for a full 90 minutes. But we do have Josh Scott on the bench to bring on just in case he does fall a little bit short in terms of fitness. But this is who we're starting with. We've got McNall, Barlow, McKeown leading the line with the front three. Hickey, O'Donnell and Devedix are going to be our main midfield three. And the back four of Little, Lees, Buddle and Nicholson. And on the bench, we've got Cornish, Reese Evans, Josh Gillies, Josh Scott and Matty Yelston. So I think we've got all bases covered in terms of where we need to be. And I think it should be. An interesting game. Hopefully we can get some points out of it and start off the season in the right way. Everyone looks fairly happy with how how we're approaching it today. And like I said, the preseason friendlies have been really successful and gone really well. So let's see how we do. So here we go then. First game of the season. Home at Croft Park. In front of the adoring fans. And let's see what we can do. In real life, this was a 1-0 win to Kidderminster. So... Let's see if we can better that at least with our first game of the season. So again, again, first highlight straight from kickoff. Came in to take the ball in. Maybe a decent attack from game one. Mitchell makes the save. We do have a positive mentality. I didn't want to go too defensive or too balanced to start off with with it being the first game at home, but Fremantle's gone through and he's hit the bar. And that's just one minute in. Danger already. Not a lot happening so far in this first half. Um, we haven't really, we haven't created anything so far in the first half hour. So I'm just going to make a couple of tweaks here, and instantly we've got two shots away before the end of the first half. But no highlights to speak of from the live, live end of things. McNall's not having a great game. Buddle's on a six point three as well. Keep going, boys. A point to one of the favourites isn't against, isn't the end of the world. But we will bring in Josh Scott just to. Save McNall for the future games. We don't want to run him too ragged already when he's only really worth 45 minutes of full fitness. But can we win the ball back? We can. Scott tries to get it out to Barlow. We get it back from Nicholson, who loses the ball. Barlow with the ball to Scott. Scott moves it out right to McKeown. Corey scores. Get in. 48 minutes gone and the first goal of the season. Probably against the run of play, you would say, in the first half. Not much created from us, but we've started the second half on the right foot. Barlow winning the ball back. Scott putting that ball across. And Corey getting into a tight angle, but that isn't a problem from him. And he tucks it 
nicely into the goal. And that's 1-0 to the Spartans. Come on, guys. 53 minutes gone and we're on another attack. Scott loses it. Richards gets it out to Owen Evans. Tried to make a tackle, but didn't quite work. Liddell wins it back, though. What can he do with this? Oh, he's lost it. Never mind. Fremantle. Buddle goes in for the header. Wins it. Hickey ball over the top to Scott. Not going to work out there. McKeown. We're on the edge of the box. Can he get a second? Oh, he puts it just wide. Unlucky, Corey. That's better, though. That's better. Much better since we made those little tweaks to the tactic. And I'm just going to make a quick sub here. I'm going to take Buddle off. I'm going to bring Elsden on. Kettering a bit and fi filed 5 0 as well. Ball on a 6.2. So we're just going to bring Josh Gillies on to see out the last 15 minutes. Good return for Gillies as well with his big injury that he had last season with his um, ligaments in his knee. Glad to see him back. Let's see if we can see this out now. Four plus minutes of stoppage time. Not much else going to happen, it looks like. But full time. And the first three points of our manager's career and our first three points as Blythe Spartans manager, more importantly. Start as we mean to go on. Well done, boys. Hands on hips. Let's get that body posture going. Positivity all around. Everyone's looking pleased. One win after one game. Three points in the playoff spots. Let's stop, stop the count now. Stop the count now. We don't need to do any more. We're ha perfectly happy as we are. But yeah, I feel like that's a pretty good point to leave it now in terms of this first episode. We've got the preseason out the way. We're now into the season after the first game. And we'll see where we'll go from here. Tune in tomorrow. The second episode will be up. We are going to do back-to-back -back days of episodes. So tomorrow we'll, we'll have an episode up for you to watch. Don't forget to hit that like, share and subscribe button. I've been St. Grimmy. Thanks very much for your time. And I'll see you all very soon.